Welcome to the chapter cell, its structure and function. We all know about the cell. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. We learned that every living organism is made up of cells. Just like how a wall is made out of bricks, a living organism is made up of cells. So cell is the basic unit of life. In your lower classes, you already learned that cells are made up of some parts. That means every cell is made up of some components. Each cell has got some other parts inside it. And you studied some of the parts. You studied about the nucleus, cytoplasm and other parts of the cell. You also learned about the shapes of cells. You learned that cells exist in different shapes. Some cells in oval shape. Some in round shape, some are cubical, some are cylindrical. This way, the cells exist in different shapes. So, you learned about the shapes of the cell and you learned about parts of the cell and you also learned about the sizes of the cell. That is different size. We know that cells are very small, microscopic. That means... We can see the cells only under microscope. But there are some cells which can be seen with the naked eye. So you learnt about the different sizes. We know that the smallest cell it measures in microns, micrometers. Whereas the biggest cell, ostrich egg is the known biggest cell that we can see with our naked eye. So cells exist in different sizes. We also learnt about the classification, division of organisms based upon the number of cells they contain. Certain organisms, this is the classification or division. So, all the organisms are divided into two groups according to the number of cells that is unicellular multicellular. So, what is this unicellular multicellular? We learned that the organisms that have only one cell throughout their life are called unicellular organisms. Examples amoeba, paramecium, euglena, these are the examples of unicellular organisms. At the same time, we also learned about multicellular organisms. Organisms that have number of cells. Some organisms may have 10 cells, some have hundreds, some thousands, millions, trillion. So, depends upon the size and complexity of the organism, it may have millions of cells. So, all these organisms, right from 10, 100, 1000 or million, all these organisms are called multicellular organisms. So, this is the division of organisms depending upon the number of cells they have. So, these are the different kind of topics which we have learnt in our lower classes. Now, what we are going to learn now? Now, we are going to learn about the parts of a cell. What are the inner parts of a cell? What we call them as cell organelles. So, we learned that a cell consists of different parts which have different functions. We call these parts as cell organelles. In this lesson, we are going to study about the functions and the structure of cell organelles. The different parts that are found inside a cell. Okay, now we see studying cells. So, how do we study cells? To observe the cells, we need some special instruments. So, you might have learned how Robert Hooke and Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek observed the tiny things, microorganisms. So, they used an instrument called microscope. So, we need a microscope to study or to observe the cells. So, microscopes are of different types. So, we have three different types of microscopes, basically simple microscope, 
and compound microscope and electron microscope so the simple microscope is a very simple instrument which is used to observe the stomata or some of the outline features of a cell if you wanted to observe some kind of bigger plant cells or animal cells we can use the simple microscope to observe but it is not possible to observe the inner parts the cell organelles like nucleus or cell wall or so on such kind of things we cannot see in a simple microscope we can use a compound microscope to study the cells so compound microscope is used to observe the cell and its organelles like nucleus and we can see the cell wall or cell membrane so these kind of things can be observed in a compound microscope so by using a compound microscope we can observe the nucleus cell membrane etc but if you wanted to study all the other parts like mitochondria golgi apparatus endoplasmic reticulum so on it is not possible by using a compound microscope so then the scientists need more powerful microscope which is called as electron microscope so this is a very powerful microscope which is used by scientists or research scholars professors to study the cells in detail the cell organelles like mitochondria chloroplast and the nucleus and nucleolus and all the other things can be studied by this electron microscope so to study to observe the cells we need the special instruments like microscopes now typical cell what is a typical cell we know plant cells and we know animal cells now what is this typical cell so typical cell is nothing but a model cell which represent all the cell organelles present in the cell say for example if you take an animal cell animal cells have different parts like nucleus and mitochondria and golgi bodies endoplasmic reticulum vacuoles nucleolus so on so every animal cell do not have all the cell organelles some animal cells have more number of mitochondria and they may or may not have a golgi body they may or may not have a vesicle so we are drawing a general diagram so this is a general diagram which represent an animal cell that showing all the cell organelles which generally appear in an animal cell is called a typical cell so a typical cell may not exist as it is we are drawing a generalized diagram of animal cells that means different cells of animals have different kind of cell organelles for example the cells of a gland salivary gland we have a salivary gland which involves in the function of secreting saliva so saliva is secreted by these glands they have the cells which contain more number of golgi bodies compared to other cell organelles because they are involved in the process of secretion so these golgi bodies helps in the process of secretion so they have more in number so a typical cell is a generalized cell diagram which represent all the different cell organelles that exist in a animal cell or a plant cell if you take a plant cell example see when we are drawing a plant cell basically we draw a big vacuole at the center and we draw some kind of plastids and we draw a thick cell wall this is a generalized diagram of a plant cell so we call it as a typical cell 